welcome back. Today on the Yorkshire coast we're cracking open ammonites and then wrapping up with something truly epic. Let's go. Morning everybody and welcome back to another early morning start on the Yorkshire coast. We've got a beautiful empty beach ahead of us. It is the school holidays, so I imagine it'll get quite busy as the morning grows later. I've got a very exciting fossil to show you at the end of this video. Does any of you remember this find? A few months ago, I discovered a section of ichthyosaur jaw, likely part of the upper or lower rostrum of the animal. After having it professionally prepared, it's ready to reveal. I'll be showing it to you at the end of this video. Stay tuned to see what it looks like now. The rock has all been removed. Not going to film too many of these type of things because there is loads of them all over Runswick. But if you do come here, you'll notice these slabs full of these fresh ammonites. They're all crushed and really poorly preserved elegantiserous, but they are always nice to see. They show really good detail if you find a slab that the sea hasn't been over. Remember everyone, if you'd like to purchase your very own fossil from the Yorkshire coast, please check out my website called biofossil.com. There's a bunch of beautiful prepared fossils available to be purchased and shipped to many countries. Please take a look if you are interested. Thank you. Check out this ammonite that I found rolling around in the rocks on the beach. The erosion had already taken off the top part of a nodule and exposed the fossil underneath. It didn't take much to prep it, just some work with the air pen and a bit of abrasion to finish off and then a little grinding. Here it is. While it's always fun to have a go at fossils with your hammer, sometimes a bit of pen work is a better choice. It gives you a much better shot at getting a clean fossil out of it. This one only took an hour or so to prep, and even though it's just a common Dactyliosaurus ammonite, pretty typical for the Yorkshire coast, I figured it was worth the extra effort instead of just cracking the little bit off on the beach and risking damaging it. So here's one that somebody has left for dead. There is an ammonite, a decent looking one there, but it's really worn. But I'm wondering if a bit of air abrasion would bring out a bit of detail. I was mainly after the big ammonite, so I gave the back of a nodule a tap, and luckily it split just right, revealing a nice partial piece I could carry home and prepare. Even I was quite surprised with how well it turned out. There was quite a bit of sea growth on the top of the ammonite, but with some air abrasion using aluminium oxide, a fairly hard powder, I managed to clean it up nicely and reveal the detail underneath. It was definitely worth the effort, and I'm really pleased with the result of the fossil. It's split open already. And it's empty. Ah, it's gone straight through the middle. 
So here's my dad's finds. He's had a lot better luck than me today on the beach. Some small middle posnegs. They always look quite good, especially when they've been wet like this. And there's the negatives. So as you can probably see, the heavens have opened. None of us have brought a coat, which is typical. It hasn't rained like this for a while. So I've just spotted this lightly looking nodule. Could have an amite in it, could have a belemite fragma cone, but worth a crack open. Nothing, a few shells. I found this nodule trapped beneath a few rocks down by the low tide mark on the beach. It looked like it had been stuck there for quite a while. After a few taps with the hammer, sure enough there was an ammonite on the inside of it. I did kind of expect it since it was the right type of rock, a nice rounded piece of limestone that usually hides a fossil, most likely an ammonite. Nodule shaped. It's yeah, but it's a bit heavy. It's one of the red ones. It's you never know, do you? No. No, wrong type of rock. It's like the middle layer stuff with minerals in. Nope. So this one could be a very good one, depending on how it opens. It looks like it's the right type of rock to have a nice ammonite in. So let's give it a go. It's a good old nodule. Well, that's a nice rounded one. So I've just collected these four nodules of various sizes. There's nothing showing on these three, but this one does have a crushed one running around the edge. You can see the keel there. Looks promising. So that's a good one in there, it just needs that end bit prepping out. That's quite good. Right, that's everything for this part of the video. I think I'll do more filming another day. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video so far. Alright guys, so as promised, it's now time to show you that beautiful ichthyosaur jaw that I've recently had back from preparation. Here it is, the ichthyosaur jaw, fully removed from the rock. There are quite a few teeth still nestled in the grooves of the jaw. And if you look closely at the cross sections, you can see where the teeth actually grew out of them. Ichthyosaur teeth are generally quite fragile and using air tools near them often causes them to shatter so the best way to prepare them is using acid which takes many hours but gives the best results it does leave the pieces quite delicate though the prep work on this one was done by Mark Hawks at Stone Treasures and I'm really pleased with how it turned out hopefully you've all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all on the next one